Hi everyone, this is Mingyao from Singularity Engineering, and in this video, we'll finish off our bioprocessing bioproce simulation of a fermenter uh, by making a parametric analysis. So this is a continuation of the other videos in the series. If you haven't seen those, please do check it out. We're going to start with a completed simulation here. So the simulation you can see, we have a steady state simulation followed by a multi-phase simulation. I've parameterized the entire analysis and we've done a response surface space optimization. This is all inside ANSYS Workbench. So let's take a look at what I did in the analysis. The way we specify parameters is we create expressions. So here I created a, an expression for rot rotational velocity and viscosity. So these are simple constants. Uh, you can put in any units you want. So I'm starting at 35 radians per second here. This corresponds to about 340 uh, revolutions per minute. Uh, and we have viscosity value here. Uh, right click on these allows us to make them into uh, workbench parameters. Once we've defined expressions, I can go into my materials, properties information, and you can see that under transport, I've set the viscosity value to be um, my, my expression. Uh, once I turn this expression into a parameter, I can adjust that inside of the workbench environment. As my, I mentioned earlier, we can also make this into a uh, non-Newtonian fluid by making the viscosity a function of shear strain rate. Similarly, for my turbine here, I specified the rotational velocity to be my parameter. And this way, I can specify the rate of rotation, uh, the, ro the rate at which my rotor is spinning. Uh, the reason I did this was because I also specified the same set of parameters in the multi-phase analysis. In my multi-phase analysis, we have the same parameters for rotational velocity and viscosity, but I've also added a, a bubble diameter and a volume per minute uh, uh, parameter. So you can see I have all of these parameters. From the volume per minute parameter, I'm calculating a velocity in, which is uh, an expression, expression that uses the volume of air per minute. Uh, times the volume uh, in the entire assembly divided by the area times the gas in and 60 seconds. So that gives us a velocity at the inlet point right here. So just like I've shown earlier, we can go to gas in and look at the fact that I use volume velocity in as our input parameter. If I look into my domain here, the dispersed fluid, we have a bubble diameter defined here, and lastly, uh, the, the viscosity and the rotational velocity is specified. So this shows you how flexible ANSYS CFD is. We can, we can turn almost anything inside of a simulation into parameters, any value we can input. That's on the input side. On the output side, so I ran the simulation, this link here will take the results from my steady state simulation and feed that into at the initial condition of my multi-phase simulation where I add in the bubbles. On the output side, uh, I didn't do any graphical post-processing. All I did here was, again, I created a number of expressions. It read all of the, the expressions in from the earlier uh, setup, so you can see there is a rotational velocity, viscosity, and VVM parameters, but I specified a few expressions to calculate some uh, quantitative information we want to know from our now from this model. So here we look at, for example, the we calculate the average shear rate. So this is just the volume average of the shear strain rate, the fluid shear rate in the entire assembly. This for this current simulation is calculated to be 17 per second. Right click on this and we can make this an output parameter. We also, once we have the shear strain rate, we want to know what the shear uniformity is. So we can write an expression that uses our average shear strain rate to calculate the uniformity. And this is from 0 to 1, where 1 means it's perfectly uniform. A 0 means it's not uniform at all. And you can see we have a point, 0 0.6 uh, value for our uniformity coefficient. We can also use this to calculate things like volume of, um, of uh, you know, the volume in which shear exceeds a certain value, 
I use the same type of expression to calculate the average volume fraction of the bubbles and then the bubble uniformity. So on average, the, the volume fraction of the air is 0 0.003. Uh, so that's 0.3%. And if we look at the bubble uniformity, we have a value of 0.4. So it's not very uniform. There's only a little bit of gas in our domain. I also specified a uh, mass transfer coefficient. So we can calculate an average for the mass transfer coefficient here. Uh, using this type of, of uh, calculations, we can feed this back into a, um, a source term or a sink term to and specify the mass transfer from the air into the water. So we can specify that information as well. So using expressions, we can do lots of really exciting post-processing and get, get quantitative information. Right-clicking on each of these parameters of interest allows us to specify these as workbench output parameters. So then we move on to the parameter bar. You can see I have a series of input parameters here. There's uh, one, there's two in the first steady state simulation and four in the multi-phase simulation. And we are grabbing five output parameters from my multi-phase analysis. Uh, notice that these two are grayed out because I want the rotational velocity to be the same as the input. So when I go to my rotational velocity, I can just spe specify the expression to be P7, which will set this rotational velocity to be the same as this rotational velocity. Similarly, the viscosity is set to be the same in both the steady state and the multi-phase analysis. So in total, really, I have four inputs and five outputs. Once I do this, I decide to do a design experiment where I'm going to do a basic central composite analysis. So this, and for each of the input parameters, I put in a minimum and maximum upper and lower bound. So ANSYS figures out the a minimum set of, of simulations to do to kind of span the entire design space. So it'll do 25 simulations. I, I hit update and it goes through and runs through all of these simulations for me automatically. There are a number of other options available for um, for your design of experiment specification, including custom. So if you decide to have a customized set of values, we can do that. Uh, furthermore, we can choose to save these results. So right now I'm only saving the parameters on the output side because obviously running 25 simulations and additional ones will be will require a lot of space for uh, large models. But if we click on des preserve design points and then preserve the files, I'll actually have a, simu a full set of, of simulation results for each one of these data points. And that's going to give us a wealth of data for our simulation. From these 25 points of analysis, we can create a response surface. So ANSYS creates a response surface that looks like this. It uses the genetic algorithm to use its genetic aggreg aggregation so to try to figure out the best fitting. So it tries to fit all five different types of responsive surfaces together. Then it tries to pr provide an aggregate to see which one fits our data the best. I also created a 10 additional verification points. And I made these verification points eventually refinement points. So this added 10 simulations to my 25 analysis. And once I've uh, matched, fit in my curves to them, you can see there's a fairly decent curve. There's verif verification points, and we can create additional verification points as needed. So we can run as many of these simulations to really get a highly accurate uh, response surface. So this is a response surface. And what's really nice about this is that we have the ability to tune our simulation. So I have four input parameters. I can say, OK, this is water right now. What happens if I make this kind of in the consistency of the motor oil, if I have a very viscous fluid? And I decided to fly to flow you know, 0 0.4 VVM of, uh, of gas through my system. And then I can try different bubble diameters. You can see that as I change these, the response surface tries to predict what my shear average and uh, uniformity of the shear, my bubble volume fraction, and uniformity of the bubbles, and then also 
my uh, average mass transfer coefficient. So this may this becomes a very easy to use tool to try to see what happens as I have a certain level of viscosity. You know what size of bubble should I be trying to put into the system? How fast should I rotate it? So if I, for example, have a slow rotational speed here, my shear rate is fairly low. My uniform is is about 65 percent. As I increase it my shear rate increases, and my uniformity really didn't change very much. However, my bubble uniformity is changing dramatically here as I reduce the speed of the rotation. So from about 20% to 31%, 36%. But obviously the trade-off there is that I have more and more shear. So that's always going to be the balance between uh, in these designs. How do I get the best amount of mixing in my model while still maintaining shear to a reasonable amount. I want to ensure that there's bubbles everywhere uh, and that all of my broth is getting sufficient amount of oxygen, but I don't want it to, the shear to exceed a certain amount um, in my domain. Going a step further, we can do some optimization. So here you can specify goals. So before I was just playing around with numbers, now I can say I can do a genetic uh, algorithm optimization. Or here I'm doing a basic screening analysis. So I'm going to have 5,000 potential designs. We want three candidates. And we want, let's see what they are. So I want, um, I certainly want high uniformity of my bubbles. And I want high large amount of uh, volume fraction for my bubbles. Um, keep switching here. Let's delete this one. And for my third parameter, I want to have my average shear to be minimized. So this kind of sets up a trade-off, right? We want lots of uh, bubbles, but then we also want very little shear. So at what operating condition can I achieve this? I can also set, set objectives and targets. So I can say, for example, make sure the average shear is below this value, or make sure the amount of volume that has high shear is below a certain value. So this is now updating my response surface. And it'll try to use these particular parameters. So I want to maximize the amount of uh, air in my domain, and make sure it's as uniform as possible, but I also want to maintain a low level of shear so that I don't damage the microorganisms inside of the uh, inside of the fermenter. So it's done here. We can take a look at some of the candidate points. You can see that uh, it's not too bad. We have some pretty um, good. So the one star, two star, three star shows you how good some certain things are. And then um, X's would indicate poor designs. So we can, for example, plot uh, average shear. Here is a mass transfer coefficient, but we can also look at, for example, uh, bubble volume fraction. So average shear on the low side here, and then we have uh, volume fraction of, of bubbles. So if I want maximum um, amount of bubbles, then I want this as high as possible. But the average shear, I want this as low as possible, which means at the top here, this is kind of our uh, Pareto front. This is where we want to operate out of. We see some kind of outliers, and we may need to run some additional simulations to figure that out. But there's certainly a trend that tells us where, what, what's possible and what's not. And if we click on any of these candidate points, it'll t provide us with an idea of, of uh, the settings we need for, to achieve that. Uh, we can look at sensitivities. So this shows us, obviously, rotational vo and vo velocity and viscosity is totally dependent on rotational velocity and viscosity. So that's very clear. But here we have a number of things that are that gives us insight into what are the parameters that are important, important in our simulation. For example, the mass transfer coefficient seems to be heavily dependent on how fast I stir it and the bubble diameter. Bubble uniformity is dependent on these two values as well. This one makes sense because that's the equation we've set. If we 
put in mass transfer explicitly, we may get more in interesting information. Uh, uniformity also depends on the size of the bubbles and also rotational velocity uh, inversely. So the, the smaller the bubbles, the more uniform, and the faster I stir it, the more uniform it becomes. Uh, uh, conversely, uh, average bu bubble volume fraction depends heavily on how fast I'm flowing air into the, the system, also the diameter of the bubbles. And the shear uniformity here depends on all three of these values. Average shear depends a lot on how fast I'm stirring. So some of the things that's very important to control in these models is how big the bubbles are that I'm putting into the system. If I'm looking at the uniformity and the average shear, then how fast I'm stirring it becomes important as well. So this gives you a lot of insight in terms of what's important and what you need to control well in your bioreactors. Uh, the sample plot allows us to filter out designs. So like I mentioned earlier, we may want to specify a um, the viscosity, which is P8 here. So maybe we want, if you know what the viscosity of your system is, we can just remove all the designs where the where the, the behavior is outside of that viscosity. And then we can start tuning this. For example, maybe we want to make sure the average shear rate is below a certain value, so that's P12. So that's over here. Let's get rid of uh, average shear. Let's do 14. Uh, we want to also make sure the shear is fairly uniform, it's 13. So we want this as un uniform as possible, so let's get rid of the lower numbers. And from then, we want to ensure we have uh, plenty, maximized amount of uh, bubbles. That's P14. So we can get rid of that and look, we have a few potential designs that informs us on what the rotational velocity should be and what the bubble diameter and also how fast I should feed the system. So this gives you an idea of how we can take a simulation that we do uh, once in ANSYS CFD and parameterize the entire model and understand for a particular given bioreactor how we can improve this, the performance for a particular type of microorganism. Furthermore, we can also parameterize the geometry inside the bioreactor. We can adjust the size of baffles. We can adjust the size of our blades. We can adjust the shape and the number of blades to see how all of those different factors can potentially improve or uh, hinder our development. So hopefully this helps you, uh, tools like this and, and uh, simulations like this would help you understand and get more confidence when you're trying to scale up a, or scale down a bioreaction. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed this series of presentations. If you do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, if you like what you see here, you're welcome to reach out to us on our website at singularityeng.com. Thank you and have a good day. Mm -hmm.